says it's going live. We never know if we're live or not. Hello, everyone. Maybe we're maybe we're live. Maybe we're not. You know what I like to do sometimes when I'm I don't know if we're live or not is like, are you a dog or a cat person or a both person? Uh, I'm the dog person. Well, have you ever been a cat person or always dog? No, always dog. <laughs> Okay. I love dogs. <laughs> yeah, me too. Actually, uh, cat, cats doesn't like me. That's yeah, the, they don't like anyone. The, yeah. That's the cool truth. Yeah, yeah, that's the truth. Okay, we're definitely live now, but hello, everyone. Um, yeah, Alberto, good to see you. Good to see you, everyone, in the chat. Welcome to another Rococo Office Hours. I'm Sam Lazarus, Creative Director for Rococo, and we are so blessed to be joined by Fabrizio Mores, um, you know, incredible... Uh, a digital artist, winner of, I think the last two of Clint's contests, right? Like the, 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 the last two that he's had, Endless Engines and Boss Fight, I think were, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. And um, yeah, joining us today to talk about uh, some of his workflows, some of how he approaches contests and uh, also just subjecting himself to Lots of questions for me about everything under the sun. And uh, so, yeah, Fabrizio, thanks so much for, for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much. The honor is totally mine. Uh, thank you so much for having me, so for uh, giving me this chance to talk with you. Uh, I follow Rococo for quite some time right now. Uh, and uh, yeah, it is awesome and crazy at the same time. <laughs> it's crazy. I, I, you were saying this yesterday when we hopped on that you like yeah. that it's an honor for you to be on here. No. Like it is, I am so happy to have you on here. You are, and you are so, the things that you've produced are incredible. And so, yeah, I, I genuinely am, you know, thank you for being here. Thank it's you gonna so be, much. It's going to be fun. Thank you so much. Yeah. And so. Yeah, I, definitely. <laughs> everyone in the chat, you know, let us know, um, as I've told Fabrizio, it's live. Things will, if things go wrong, let me know in the chat. Um, yeah. And I don't think you, you can't see the chat Fabrizio, but people are psyched that you're here. Um, yeah, I awesome. know. Two-time champion, baby. He's here. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, okay, so let's... I think before I have... Um, I, I Again, I told you I downloaded a couple of your videos, like the breakdown for Boss Fight and Endless Engines and things. So that's what's running in the background is some of Fabrizio's work. But before we get into... You know, we're going to be jumping into <laughs> some actual Unreal Engine and Blender and maybe even talking about 3ds max a little bit because you're an og 3ds max user as well yeah and i imagine you're still yeah. in there a lot yeah um but before we get into that maybe we could just start with like could you tell me a little bit about you know your journey through the industry kind of where you started and where you are now and um i think you are working at a at a ginger picture is that ginger pick yeah, yeah gin, gin, ginger pick yes the name of my company yeah okay so yeah tell me a little bit about how you you got started again i think 3ds max was was the genesis yeah uh yeah uh well uh, i started long ago uh i am uh 20 years working on cg right now and uh i started in a big company in rio de janeiro called Sigus fly uh i was interested in CGI since I was young, uh, watching Toy Story and all these Pixar animated movies and I got blown away by the, the quality and the, start to uh, grow a curiosity of how th how is this possible? How is this done? Is there different media? What is this? When I started uh, learning about it, I started liking even more. When I finish, when I graduated, I joined the Sigus Fly team. Uh, I worked there uh, ten years as a generalist, 3D 3D generalist. In 3ds Max, we did, was it a little bit of everything? Yeah, yeah. yeah actually, the, the main the main tool for 3D is 3ds Max. Uh, we worked with 3ds Max. Uh, we switch renders, render engines. Uh, by the time we started with a render. Uh, called Brazil, and then we jumped to Manta Ray, and then V-Ray, uh, I-Ray. Yeah, <laughs> we we, we did a lot, but uh, yeah, yeah, all the rays, but everything in 3ds Max. And um, 10 years later, the company shut down, mm. and one of the main uh, partners, um, uh, uh, my, my former boss, uh, asked me if I would like to join him in this new company, 
called Ginger Peak. So he founded, I co-founded, we, we are together since the beginning of the, this company. Uh, actually, this company is, uh, is his doing, right? Uh, he started the company, uh, a lot of clients uh, know, him, know him very well. And we started moving forward with this and now we are 11 years. Oh man, 11 I already, years with this company, yes. That's awesome. I already wanna get, like, I know we should get into the actual showing 3D, but I already have questions about, like, it's a very different experience, I imagine a big like yeah. a bigger company and then a small kind of boutique studio were yeah definitely did you is there like a clear preference do you i mean it's been 11 years now so i imagine you like the format of a smaller team and more direct like is there is there kind of was that like a really nice thing when you kind of shed some of the bigger company or do you miss it a little bit or no i actually i like it because uh I, I worked far from the from the studio. Oh, okay. So yeah. is there a, a long trip back and forth every day? And uh, working remotely is my preferences. My preference. I, 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 I know some people that don't like too much work at home, but I really enjoy it. I, I, I can manage my time more. And um, Working with small teams, I think it is more manageable. Actually, I don't have experience uh, managing a huge team mm -hmm. like was in my former company. Uh, but I, I like this way. It, it works this way. And uh, the, the industry in Brazil changed a lot since then. So uh, now we don't have much studios as big as the studio I, was, I used to work with. It's all shrunk so, down. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's all more scattered. Uh, scattered. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it is easier to manage a small team. So yeah, I think it is a win-win for us. It's also, I mean, I, I've i only been in CG now, oh God, it's, it feels like forever, but it's only been eight years for me now. But so, but I came in when I'm Blender hadn't made the switch. We were talking about the Blender making the switch and that's when you started getting a little bit more interested in when Blender did the 2.8. But seeing yeah, yeah. the difference in accessibility, you know, you've seen like the whole kind of the whole industry open up so that, you know, people have access to these yeah. tools now, which is yes. fascinating, um, you know. Yeah, it is amazing. Yeah. It is amazing. Yeah, uh, back in the day, uh, we didn't have uh, much tools and special, right. and and actually, uh, we didn't have uh, indie licenses, and the, the licenses was way too yeah. expensive. So you have to join a company way less to get access. Yeah, right. Yes, there's stuff. no way that we can do a freelance work with all the licenses you need to work with, and uh, it was impossible at the back in the day. Yeah, and now it is totally doable. I know, and I love that because you end up getting just, you know, I think one thing that people imagine the, the you know, the, the best place you can go is like Marvel, whatever, there's these big studios, but many of them, from what I understand, they're, they're locked into these older workflows, technologies, proprietary plugins that they have, right? And they can't do, they can't switch everything to Blender because it's, they have like millions of dollars yeah. on the line for the project, but like, now yeah. that it's so accessible, I just keep seeing these like 14 year olds who are making, I mean, it, it makes me, it's like, I'm jealous, <laughs> but also it's so cool to, to think that like a 10, like 10 year olds literally can open up Blender for free, yeah. click on whatever your breakdown or like Clint's tutorial or whoever it is. And they can do these, like the stuff you see from these young kids is I just think it's crazy, you know, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it, it is crazy. And just rem reminds me, in the Endless Engine ch Challenge of Clinton, uh, the, the, the first in this year, uh, the Clinton's Challenge, uh, there, is, there was this guy that was uh, uh, working uh, to, to make the submission for, for, for the challenge. Uh, and he started to talk, talk with me in Discord. Mm. And he started showing, showing me his work and was a very good quality oh man that's great and and uh he just said well uh i'm not sure if i can finish on time because i have a uh, final exams in school I'm like, really how old are you <laughs> oh i'm 14 what yeah was that 14. Landgren? was that and, william landgren 
Uh, actually, I don't know his name. It is CG other... Man, his uh, alias. Uh, he, he never told me his name. I just know his <laughs> alias. I mean, even that's cool. Because, I mean, I feel like even, I mean, even Discord is like enabling this conversation right now. It's not only like Blender yeah. and Unreal, it's like everything is easier for, I don't know, it's just really cool. Okay, but that is a good segue into, I mean, again, and I encourage everyone to, I, I put, uh, Fabrizio's YouTube and Instagram down in the description below. Go there because hey, there's some great you. breakdowns. Go check out Ginger Pick um, and your oh, professional you. work. I mean, and we have the real running in the background is like incredible, but also and it's amazing that it's only been one year since you have won both of these huge animation contests. Um, but Man, can you... it looks like a way more time than that. I know. It well, it's so... like pandemic X <laughs> after, you know, time is meaningless now. Uh, um, uh. But can you talk about, um, yeah, I mean, I think so. I, I think one thing before we get into like the, the actually opening up Unreal and seeing some of your workflows for mocap sure. and, and general workflow stuff is your ideas for both of those uh, contests were both incredibly original and can you talk about how you approach, you were talking about it a little bit yesterday when we were chatting, but how you approach uh -huh. like personal work versus uh, professional work. And like, I think a lot of people struggle with where do they get the idea for the contest submission, right? Like that locks you. Check. Am I back? Can you hear me at all again? You got me at all? No. Can you hear me? Hold on. Got me at all? Can you hear me? Fabrizio? Okay, you can hear me on, but Fabrizio can't hear me. Check, check. You got me at all? Okay, you can hear me. Can you give me a one, two? Thank you, everyone. Hold on a second. I, man, I, and I was just, I've been telling Fabrizio that something always goes wrong every time. My mic is, yeah, my mic might be different a little bit. Um, but can you give me a one, two, three, Fabrizio?
Sweet. Okay. So I think are we good? We're 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 back maybe. Sorry everyone. Um so I forget where we were talking about endless engines. Okay, wait, hold on. Now I can't hear you. Oh golly. What Hold on, hold on. Output device. Okay. Good. We're back. This is I told you. What did I say? Hey. Yeah. This uh, something it, always it, goes it, wrong. It, yes. Yeah. Okay. But, well, but you 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 are summoning this these issues. That's true. Okay. <laughs> Perhaps I am. I'm like I'm like putting it out into the you universe. Should, <laughs> yeah, you should start saying it might something might go wrong. Well, but Not no, but I like like now that something has gone wrong, I mean, hopefully nothing goes wrong again. Like there won't be something worse. Like a fire won't start in this room or, you know, whatever it would be that uh, now we have <laughs> cleared the karma. Okay. I think good. I think we're back. Thank you everyone for sticking uh, with us. Um, but yeah, I think that we were talking about um, <laughs> having the idea, having, having the, the ideas idea. for, the, yes. for the, the project. Yes, exactly. How does that, how does that get started for you? Is it just like watching lots of anime and like shows and stuff or? Uh, well, uh, it, it depends a lot. Uh, sometimes I really struggle a lot to have an idea to start a new a personal project. Uh, I think in, in the case for the Clinton's challenge, uh, since it was a, a more specified theme, was way easier to find mm. some idea to match the criteria of these challenges. Uh, for the first one, I kind of went random. I started looking, uh, I, I started watching his announcement and just pops on my head uh, an old movie that I really loved when I was a kid. It, it is uh, Honey, I Shrank the Kids. Oh, yeah. Um, Classic. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I really loved that movie and I started working my mind in something like that related to uh, miniature bugs. Uh, and so since it was a engine related challenge, I started thinking in a mechanical bug and things went this way. And I, during the project, I keep, kept developing the idea until, until the end. Uh, in the middle, in, in the, actually I was organizing in thresholds mm. i have the raw idea and wow i will block it out for the first week and is this Let's you're not see. in blender yet is this oh. this is 3ds still uh, uh, no it was all in blender okay uh i was yeah i, I was um confident enough to use the tool uh, i don't like to mess with tools that i really have no idea how to do right. just a, a little understanding of it so i can uh, things get messy really fast if you don't know what you were doing. So I, I was uh, trying Blender for a little more than a couple of years okay. before this challenge. So I, I have enough understanding of to, to do something that would work, I think. And yeah, I, I started in Blender. Uh, I, have, I already gathered a lot of assets. I had a, um, the uh, Polyhaven assets as well. I have a lot of stuff that I could gather together and start building something really fast. And uh, yeah, I, I started making a block out, a very simple animation block out of the, the, the camera, the template camera that uh, the challenge was providing. Right. And uh, first week was the blocking and yeah, it, I, I think it is promising. I just showed to the community and it has a, a, a well was well received and well let's keep going from that and i started modeling the bug having new ideas and then i i was at the first i was thinking uh, uh army of bugs behind this mm. one and oh th this might go too much and uh, i'm not sure if i can do this but uh, i i will focus in one bug Let's see what happens. I finished this bug. Wow, well, this looks a little boring. Let's add some stuff, some story to it. And then I, I have the, the, the idea of making another bug chasing the, the, the main one. And do, and you, do you set this, like, like strict deadlines for yourself for that sort of thing? Like, are you like, I have a week to do the block out and then I'm going to... Because I think it was a month, right? All of his contests are, are usually 30 days. Yeah, 
Yeah, this one, this one, if I remember correctly, was five weeks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a little, a little more. I think usually, uh, I think it usually are four weeks, but this one was five mm. weeks. And uh, I didn't uh, made a, a tight schedule, but it was more like this. Well, I, I will work this in a week and see how it happens. If I still liking the idea, I will keep going. Yeah. If not, I will drop it. I just drop it and give up. <laughs> I don't want to spend too much time on, on something that I don't think it will be looks will look nice. And right. Yeah. I I I, and I, I didn't want to uh, push myself too much. Yeah. Uh, I just want to enjoy the challenge and be relaxed. So I didn't want to push myself too much. So I started with I started very simple, and keeps growing from that. And uh, re, uh, reading the, the comments, uh, have a better understanding of mm. what the, the community is receiving, what, uh, your work in progress. That's, uh, and this, one, this is one thing that I, I, I think it is very nice working with the, on these challenges because it gives the chance to exchange and uh, exchange with other artists and it's hard to it do is it amazing. in a vacuum. It, yeah, it's like nice when there is some feedback. And and Clint's Discord is like incredible for that because everyone is very engaged and sharing things and, you know, is willing, giving yeah. constructive feedback, which is nice. Yeah, and, and, and this was a, a good meter for me mm. if I'm doing something nice, well receptive or not. And uh, because it is really hard to criticize your own work, work you you need other opinion. Of course, you have to filter a lot. Right. Yeah. But uh, you you can take good things and good advices from this. Yeah. Uh, I I I got very good advices from the community, from my friends, my my family as well. Uh, everybody is very helpful. Um, yeah. And it, it is really nice, so, so you can uh, as an artist uh, know how to take critics and take the best from this and filter something that doesn't align with your vision. Yeah. And sometimes you can have an idea that you weren't you 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 weren't think about it but kind of clicks, "Wow, this is nice. I I I can implement this. This, this is doable." Mm -hmm. And a lot of stuff come uh, comes and and uh, adds to the project uh, during the process this yeah, way. It's a necessary and skill it, to have that being able to take yeah. the criticism and take the good, you know, and leave the, yeah. the bad. Yeah, definitely. And, and it is also hard as well because you have, you, you, you get a lot of critics and yeah. man, a lot, a lot. Yeah. And you, you, you need to start to filter it and uh, take the best of it. And, uh, I, it is great. There's something I heard about criticism, which was like a you know YouTube whatever short that I that I saw. I think it was from Bill Hader actually, and it was that when you show something to someone for criticism and they tell you something is off about it, usually they're right about what's off, but their idea to fix it is wrong. Like they will they'll be like, "You should do this," oh. and. It's like, well, they, they can tell that something isn't working and maybe you agree, but then their idea to fix it, like, forget that. You figure out how to fix it. But, like, take that maybe that area needs a, a tweak of some sort, which, I don't know, I That's liked. That's very interesting. Isn't that, I, I liked that. Yeah, I thought that yeah, that made sense. It is, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it, it makes, it makes sense. Yeah, well, it, it is great because um, it, it is not... It is not difficult having ideas. Um, I, I think the most difficult is to implement it, yeah. and I, I I I can easily get a, an idea that it is too complicated and gets almost impossible to do to make it really fast. Yeah. And uh, th this is the these are the easiest ideas, easiest ways to get an idea. Well, something almost impossible that you won't be able to do in, in time. Uh, that's is where you should think in other in other stuff and because uh, I, I think in it for for challenges or mm. actual projects with deadlines you have to be smart you have to to stick to to think that are possible you have to be um realistic with yeah. the um with the expectations and um and what it is 
technical possible yeah that's a well. killer i think for a lot of people is that you get out over your your skis and you just you you want to do everything but it's you have limited time and then it's it's very easy yeah. to be overly ambitious um Okay, but you won. So you won that contest, which again, that's a very yeah. fun judging. That must have been crazy because I'm, I'm sure it was just, I mean, it, it, it's an, again, go watch the piece, everyone. It's on Fabrizio's YouTube channel, which link is down below. Um, but the the one of the prizes for that was a Rococo setup. Um, and yeah. you had worked a little bit with mocap, but not, you hadn't had a mocap suit before. And so no. you started, that's what you used in part for um, Endless Engines, or no, for um, Boss Fight, right? No, for, yeah. Yeah, and maybe you can talk a little bit about um, that experience of starting to integrate mocap and like the value. And then also, we were talking about this again yesterday, is like the limitations that there is with mocap, whether it's mocap in general has limitations, but then Rococo has very specific limitations, right? And figuring out where those lines are so that you uh again don't get bogged down and like getting too ambitious right but yeah maybe just talk about how that how that went you know and and we can even i think start getting into the uh unreal project yeah too sure at some point yeah yeah sure uh well uh yeah uh was amazing and i was so amazed and so surprised uh when the 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 first the first place it was also awesome and overwhelming. Were you, I imagine Unbelievable. Were you, watching this, you were watching the, the judging because they, they live streamed it, right? And yeah, yeah. That, were you just like, I, I would just be shaking, you know, and it gets winnowed down and you're like, oh, I'm in the top 10. Oh, oh I'm in I, the top three. Yeah, actually, it was funny because uh, I would never imagine being top in top five. I, this was totally, totally unreachable in my head. Totally. 100%. Uh, but I really wanted to stay in the top 100. Right. Uh, top 100. And uh, th this was my, my goal. Uh, well, uh, it would be awesome being at the, the first time I'm joining these challenges and be in top 100 would be awesome. Uh, I kept this in my head. Of course, uh, this is something that a long shot as well. Um, and well, I, I try to work on this. Uh, I will do my best and don't expect anything more than the Healthy. satisfaction of finishing a piece that you enjoy watching. Uh, I was focusing on that, but I really wanted to be on top 100. Yeah. It was, wow, be, would, would be so awesome. So uh, the, the, the total length of the stream, I think, was four hours. Right. They're really long. And after, yeah, yeah they, they and they announced all the 100 um uh, the 100 pieces in this in this right. stream and in, in the end of the stream they announced the top five and and the winner so i think was two hours and a half and they showed my work yeah i i made celebrated it. so much and right. yeah yeah i made it i i did it great awesome before that i was so nervous after that i just relaxed i got off of the 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 tv room a little bit stretched my my legs made a popcorn <laughs> crack a beer and came back and oh let's watch the rest of the the, the, the stream because i really want to see the winners yeah but totally totally relaxed and yeah and and then the big time comes when they announced the, the five winners and, well, okay yeah uh, yeah let's see let's see and uh they announced the the, the four oh wow oh, and I, I was really the first place the first is the last one. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, so they're going up through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because uh, I, I was rooting for a specific piece over there. Mm. I really thought when I first saw this piece, I really thought it would win, mm. and it and we it won the third place. Mm. Oh, really? The third place, man. Who who be the winner? This was so amazing. This piece and the second one was oh yeah, amazing. The second piece. And when Clinton said, well, uh, there is, uh, the, so the, the winner is from Brazil, and uh, I just froze because I knew that wasn't any Brazilian in the top 100. Right. I, I watched everyone. I was, oh, man, that's not possible. And they, 
they announced my name for oh, no, man, I can't believe it. I just was shocked. I was paralyzed. <laughs> That's amazing. For the whole time. Oh my god. I was god. paralyzed, man. I can't believe it. That's so I can't cool. believe it. Yeah. Yeah. It w- yeah. It was was really Crazy. really surprising. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, I, uh, yeah. Now I'm interested about how it was the second time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the second time and it, it is a, a whole other beast because it was what are the odds? Uh, totally. I, I just wow. Well, yeah, what are the uh, I yeah, it would be great being one top hundred, but oh man, I, I won't expect anything, man. I, I know I went the, the the last one, but man, ha- having the, the the highlights twice, uh, no no go, no 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 way. Right. So unlikely. That's a very and, healthy attitude, though. I mean, that's the way to do it is just to be satisfied you with, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You 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 have to do what what you can, right? Uh, and uh, you are not the judge. You have no control on right. this. So, yeah, the people are uh, very experienced. People are over there watching your work, making the selection, uh, like uh, Clinton mentioned, uh, and it uh, and it is subjective. Uh, there right. are some people that. There, there's other people that are not very happy with the results, and this has happened everywhere, yeah. and it is totally fine. Everybody has has their their mindsets, have her preferences. Yeah, and it's it's deeply yeah. personal. I mean, it's like there is no objective Definitely. winner, you know. So yeah, which is I think hard for. I don't know because you're watching, and like you were saying, like the you know the person that you liked the most is like third, and um, but it's. Yeah, it's it's an interesting thing because it is so it's such a subjective, you know, it's it's just yeah. it's art is so subjective that it, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that can be tough. But I, but I, I I won't complain at all. I'm so happy yeah. that their subjectiveness chose my work again. Well, I so also it's think amazing. it says something <laughs> about your work being it's like extra. I mean, it, your work is so good that you would even think I would feel like for Clint even it would be like we can't you know, we're going to, he's going to win twice. Like that feels like, but it's like, no, because it's just, that's, that, it is that good. And they are, you're, they, you know, they I think, I think, uh, you know, yeah, everyone can argue about which is their favorite or whatever, but it's, I, I don't know. I feel like it's extra impressive that you've, you've done it twice and it, and it's been deserved twice and it just, uh, I don't know. Yeah. So, but yeah, okay. So, but let, uh, let's talk about how you how you approached the the second one and using mocap, and um, yeah, and maybe we can even jump into Unreal and you can talk about sure. um, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, b- before uh, what well, like, like you mentioned before, I didn't have any experience with uh, mocap right. uh, in any kind. Uh, I worked with uh, motion cap motion capture da- data before. But I, I never had the experience to capture it and to direct it and uh, clean it, clean it up. Uh, I didn't have this uh, uh, this ex- experience before. Uh, as soon as I got the suit, mm-hmm. this amazing, awesome black box, so <laughs> premium yeah. quality. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I, and, and the, the, the smell, man, the smell when you open up something new. Oh man, I have to do something with it. I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what. But I, I need to do something. I, I just started, uh, as soon as I got my battery, I started testing it. And uh, I remember I was working in a character, uh, a game character, uh, uh, by the end of last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, is a, it is a personal project. Uh, it, is a, it is on my YouTube channel, uh, Shakan. It is a remake, a, a reimagination of an old video game character. Uh, I started uh, making designs, and um, uh, a friend of mine helped me with the design as well. Had some ideas to implement it, and uh, I wanted to do something more detailed, more next-gen mm. video game look. And uh, I started working with Unreal as well. I work with Unreal uh, for a, a little more than uh, two years now. Okay. So uh, I got some experience on it. Uh, but uh, before I ju- was just working with the character. I didn't know how to how I would do with this. If I just make some screenshots with poses of uh, an environment, if I do animation, I, I really thought in doing animation. But well, animating realistically takes so much time to to, to do it. Uh, it's so long. I don't want to spend too much time on this project. And uh, I I kind of drop it. Uh, I 
left the, the project hanging a little bit. And after having the suit of men, it was, they just came instantly. I mean, I, I have to do motion capture for this guy. I have yeah. to do something about it. Even if it is not a crazy animation, something more simple, of course, I, I never do. I, I always make a way to make it thing, things more complex and more, way more than it should. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I started making a full animation, uh, 30, se 30 or 40 seconds animation. For, well, it's funny him. how even and, uh, I, like, I end up, you know, so much of motion that we end up doing for mocap is not super exciting. You know, in that it's just like somebody, like an idol or waiting or looking or something. And it's even for, I find that it's, you know, mocap still gives you a real feeling of presence. And like, um, you know, it just, it, 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 you get a very natural movement, right? So that's the whole idea is that it helps cut out all that hand animation expertise that you need to make things look yeah. real. And, but then oftentimes it's just like standing there. I mean, even with Shikan, which is, yeah, again, and there, and I noticed that on that YouTube video that you released of it, the creator of the character commented. And yeah. He, yeah. Which is so cool. Oh man, this is, this, man, it, it, it made my, my ear, yeah. this comment, I, I, it is so, uh, yeah, man. From your childhood, like describe. you've been living with, you know, this character, yeah. and that gaming, like that special gaming experience yeah. from your childhood, and to have that's yeah, so it, amazing. It, it is amazing. Yeah, so unexpected because uh, I I just posted there. Uh, I yeah. I didn't even uh, I just posted. It was uh, there was no compromises. I just did for fun yeah. and for knowledge, and. Receiving this kind of feedback, it is it is so amazing. Yeah. And yeah, give gives the um. It makes makes you move forward and do more. Uh, it just adds to. Yeah. It, it makes everything. Yeah, this, this is totally worth it. Um, and not just for the for the compliments and for the for the recognition, but uh, also uh, the things I learned uh, with right. this project because. Yeah, it was amazing because it was my my first experience with Rococo. I didn't know well how to implement it in Unreal or any other software. Uh, I chose Unreal because I was doing a game character. I'd like to make a, a next gen look mm. to it. So I, I started digging in the in, uh, the uh, Unreal uh, integration workflow with Rococo, and was overwhelming uh, for the whole process, not just Rococo, but uh, everything, because I was using MetaHuman, uh, the, at least the base of MetaHuman, mm -hmm. a very, very complex rig. And I moved to Blender, started editing everything. And I also wanted to make cloth simulation yeah. in real time. Man, it was so exhausting. And all the physics of like but, the uh, handling skulls, the, and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to tackle everything because I, I didn't want to refine things mm -hmm. later. And yeah, I, I just make things to work. And I would like to learn how, how, it, how, how it's done. And it was great. Uh, was overwhelming, but it was so rewarding uh, at the end. Because when, when the second challenge came, I had the knowledge right. to implement Rococo to the animation. Right. It was way easier because I... I I I get I got the job earlier. Yeah. I really struggle. I have my struggles earlier. I could address the issues earlier. So doing uh, the boss fight challenge, of course, was very demanding. Uh, I really pushed myself a little too hard for this one. But uh, I I have the, the enough understanding of how to use the suit, how to use, choose the technology, how to use the Unreal features. To make this happen but it was very but <laughs> very demanding as to well get to that point yeah yeah and, yes and yes. you were doing all of the uh the you did your mocap retargeting in unreal or did you do it for shikan in blender uh no both was in oh, unreal okay. it, it was one th it was one of the things that i like to learn because when i first saw uh, the unreal announcement the amazing features yeah that's awesome and when they they announced uh, animation features as well Control this rig. is definitely one thing yeah yeah th that was definitely definitely one thing that interests me a lot because uh cleaning uh, cleaning the process before going to the unreal or exporting mm. uh alembic with geometry cache is 
kind of heavy and I would like to address the most things inside the engine and see how it happens. And I'm really happy with this workflow. Yeah, cool. I mean, yeah, it is. And, and it is a process to figure that all out. But um, yeah, it was. But but I, I'm, I mean, you've told me a little bit about that process, but I would love to dig in and, and see sure. what it's what it's like, including a great little Mixamo control rig that you used for yeah, a boss fight, of right? Course. But you didn't use that for Shikan, I, I, I guess. I, so it's that's it's almost nice that you and I, maybe you had found that, but I feel like with Shikan, you almost did the hardest possible thing to teach yourself. You know, using yeah. like a custom built control rig, um, or the meta human. Uh, you were down yeah. to the meta human control rig, I guess. Yeah, I have to adapt the control rig meta human. Yeah. Uh, I have to do a lot of adaptations because also it ho also has uh, rigid body simulations right. attached to it. And uh, the cloth simulation was a whole other beast that I had to, to tackle. And yeah. uh, it was a separated process. And man, that was a lot of issues that I face it all also yeah almost make me drop this project well let's but, uh, let's talk i want to let's talk about them including the i mean your time sure. about coco issues and the i well and i guess we're we can jump into <laughs> the boss fight but like jumping and having foot problems and then having to do editing and all of that and i'm curious about yeah let's let's share it baby hold on okay so how do i i want yeah. to oh yeah there we go okay nice God, I love Discord. Okay. It's so great. It's like so fast and we can, if there's no latency. Oh God, what am I saying out loud? Awesome. Yeah, it looks <laughs> good. Yeah. Yeah, the, this character here was from an old project. Okay. I I did a, a few years ago. And so I this was a shortcut, right? I don't have to build a character from scratch yeah. for this challenge. Uh, but I, I have to add it to customize it because it didn't have legs. <laughs> I didn't make, I just made the torso. Oh, just I like have to complete the character, but hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, so I used the Mixamo rig, uh, for the base. So you, did you, you uh, finished your character and then you uploaded yeah. an auto rigged on Mixamo? Yes. Okay. But yes, then you, uh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, but then you must've, then you must've didn't, then you went in and added some of the armor pieces or. Yeah, actually, uh, what I what I exported to uh, to Mixamo was a more simplified right. uh, bit geometry with the same shape of this character. I, unfortunately, I can't find it here. I tried to find it. I, I can't find. It. But it is simplified. It doesn't have these extra assets and extra armor pieces uh, on this on this simplified geometry. I exported to Mixamo, made the auto rig in Mixamo, mm -hmm. ex uh, exported back to Blender. And then I started to adapt my actual character to this, to this rig. I made the weight painting transfer from the simplified geometry to this one and started working from that. Okay. So, um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah, that's the... But a Mixamo um, base, which is nice. I, I mean, I, I, I feel like that... I mean, and there are so many, um, you know, again, that Mixamo control rig that you found, like, I, it feels like a smart move, you know, in terms of your time and your maybe yeah. setting yourself up for success a little bit. Yes. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Mixamo, uh, it is a, a very simplified rig. It totally worked totally great for, for this case. But I need some extra bones because I want to have control for the other armor pieces. Uh, so I kept the control rig. I added this bone. Uh, it, it is so important that you have to uh, keep the names as the four uh, as came, mm. comes to the software. Uh, and I just add these extra bones here. I put proper names on it so I easily find. Uh, I will show later in Unreal Engine. But uh, it was very important for me to add these bones and add these controls here. Also for the elbow, uh, the wrist piece, uh, this uh, this part here. I did. It. I wasn't sure if I actually used it or not, but I did it. <laughs> the this this control here. That's smart. I mean, uh, yeah, it's nice to have that option. Yeah, I feel like for later. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 
but this this part here i definitely need to to use it so i made a bone for each part and for the cloth since i struggled so much with cloth simulations uh with previous project shakan i wanted to stay away with cloth simulation so i rigged the the hanging cloth of her for, of her for cloths okay so then so did you end up doing cloth sims for um boss fight or did you end up hand animating yeah. the cloth by by yeah for for the submission i hand animated mm. the, the cloth uh but i did an extended video that i use simulation because uh the, i tried to animate by hand the cloth in that scene was horrible so yeah let, let's yeah. Screw this! I, I will right. do cloth simulation here. I remember the the submission. That's the most the, the, the actual actually the, the important stuff is done. So I can make my struggle here right now. Is no that's uh, not nothing that if doesn't gets right. That's no problem at all. I won't lose anything. But yeah, uh, I, I I want I wanted to be safe for the submission. So I I, I wanted to stay away of things that I I all, all, I had. A lot of struggles already a lot of issues that i have to resolve so right. I, I didn't want to make new ones yeah. unnecessary ones i find that it's especially with mocap because um i what i found is that you there are um there are so many ways to shoot yourself in the foot when it comes to mocap like in the rigging portion of it right <clears throat> whether it's like intersection issues or um it's like, for example, this character, it's so nice because it has a very, the armor pieces are separate and the rest of it is a very clean silhouette. So I feel like you don't have as many issues with collision, maybe. Um, and it's just, I, I feel like a lot of, I when I was starting with mocap, I, a lot of the times I was just, like, if you, if you can choose a character that makes sense and is going to be easy to work with, it makes such a huge difference for making the mocap look good later, right? Um, and yeah. yeah. And uh, one thing that I that I learned that uh, one one thing that was the most I, I think was the most surprising uh, yeah, thing give, that give when I started to learned. using Rococo. <laughs> yeah, uh, the most surprising thing is um, I started doing the, the the motion capture. I was surprised of the amount of details, mm. uh, small subtle movements that uh, Rokoko's capture. But uh, at the same time, wow, uh, this arm should be a little higher, mm -hmm. and maybe it is intersecting some things like you mentioned. But uh, and then I realized, wow, it doesn't need to be perfect. Mm. The, the data doesn't need to be perfect. It, it gives you a a very nice head start. Right. Even you have to change a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff later. I, I will show here. Uh, it gives you a head start and also give you idea, give you a, a foundation mm. of the animation. How how should it look uh, and and it is so fast. You you can see right right in the beginning. Right. The animation is working because uh, when when you hand animate it, you have to block it. You have spent days or weeks or months doing an animation and then later you can really evaluate oh this is awesome that but motion capture just a matter of minutes you can have it and even if not exactly what what you were expecting you can record again 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 as uh, as soon as you get closer totally. to what you expect and then later you can work on on top of it yeah yeah it's uh, very, and, it allows you to be very iterative and instead of like I often find instead of having to make what I've got work, cause maybe I did a bad take. And again, Rococo has like limits. We were talking about the limitations, like maybe something goes wrong. It's what I do like is that it's very easy to, okay, let me hop back in the suit. Like, let's just do it again, you know, and I'll just do it again. And uh, that can kind of, I don't know. I, I, I like that aspect of it. Um, I wish that there weren't like limitations, but it's nice that at least you can hop in and re just iterate quickly. And, Oh, I, I maybe I'll move my yeah. arm this way differently next time. And I don't have to, I can, I don't have to like fix, I don't have to be locked into that original take cause I can just jump back in and re-record, which yeah. I, I yeah. Like. Yeah. And, and, and doing this, um, 
you know what to expect and you know how to work on top of it. You understanding the tool, uh, 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 not not just Rococo, any tool that you work mm -hmm. with, it, it is very good to have a good understanding of the strongs and the the weak totally. weak parts of a, any any software, any piece of of tool who have their ups and downs. Uh, it is no way to get around. Yeah. No way at all. Uh, I, I struggle a lot with Unreal. I struggle with Blender, 3ds Max. Any so every software I work with, uh, ever hardware as well. You you have to f figure out something. Yeah. Uh, no no matter what. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there are just there's no golden bullet for any of this stuff. And, and yeah, definitely. I mean, and and for again, like what you were saying on, it gives you a head start. I think what what I uh -huh. always what I think about mocap is like our goal is always to get you to like 85 to 90% of the way there because a hundred percent is just not possible given that the character will always have different proportions than you. And you know, yeah. I just, you're going to have to do editing at a high level. And so the goal isn't necessarily to get it perfectly. It's like to get it to a point where you're yeah. saving yourself time and I think, yeah, it, it can be good for that, you know, yeah. Yeah, but uh, in, in, in any any scenario, you are always uh, gain, gaining time, right. production time. Right. Because yeah. you don't have to spend too much in animating. You don't have to animate from scratch. Of course, depends on the project. Sometimes you are aiming for something more cartoonish uh, stuff. Right. And you can also do cartoon stuff uh, with Rococo as well. Right? You have the base, you have the foundation here, just edit. Yeah. Um, it also, Rococo also helps me with pose, uh, with uh, character pose as well. Something mm -hmm. sometimes is hard to, to tackle. You have to do a lot of testing, but uh, using Rococo, you can test different poses as well. We don't need ac actu the, the actual animation. You just need to, to right. freeze a pose if you, if yeah. you want. To. Like an exaggerated so stance or something. Yeah. You can, yeah, you can kind of get there yes. a little quicker. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it, it, it is. Uh, so th these these are things that I, I started discovering later after right. trying the, the 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 gear. And uh, well, uh, going back here, uh, so I, I moved the, the character back to to Blender. I customized the the rig, the Max Mixamo rig, and just just so I can have an idea, I have it open here, yeah, the, the Rokoku Studio. This is it. This is yeah, where, sure. This is where the good and the bad um, shows up. Yeah, this was one of the jumps. The road, road that of the, one of the jumps. Right. And oh yeah, yeah baby, one, look at that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> one one legs, one leg went crazy. Yeah. When you jump with Rococo, is one of the limitations. Sometimes you can lose the orientation for who doesn't. A hundred percent. Are not aware of this. Yeah. But uh, it, but I, I I did other takes as well. Um, let's see here. Yeah. And essentially, as somebody was saying, actually in the chat, even, <laughs> um, feet got to be on the ground or it does weird stuff. Yeah. I mean, yes. Is, I mean, I have gotten like jumps. I, I did a stunt stream at one point, like that one looks a little bit better, but yeah, I mean, essentially the way that Rococo works is that it calculates the, the foot placement on the ground is super important. And that's, uh, so once you like crawling, hanging off of a, once your feet are off the ground for an, ex especially for an extended period of time, it starts to freak out. And it's just one of these limitations. And, you know, based on, you know, it's like there would be less of a limitation if we made the suit more expensive. Right. And so there's like these, it's really important. And Fabrizio, you were asking even before we got on the stream, like, um, hey, is it okay if we talk about the limitations of Rococo? And as, as I told you, like, I think it's really important to talk about the limitations of Rococo because there are limitations and they're very hard limitations. But if you know about them, it like then you're working within a system where, I don't know, that's expected. And again, it's all about these trade-offs, right? And And it's like, I always say, you know, I love a lot of the other mocap tools. There's like incredible mocap tools out there, whether it's Move AI, whether it's Wonder, whether it's XNs, and it all always comes down to the limitations that you are willing to work with, whether that limitation is like budget, whether it's space, or, you know, if you have an infinite budget, like you you should get a 
system that costs more. If you don't, then, you know, so it's, it's there's all these um, these trade-offs that you have, right? And the one of the big trade-offs for Rococo is because it's inertial motion capture, doing things like clapping, doing things like crawling around on the floor or rolling around on your back, like you're going to get these bizarre results. And then you have to play within the limitations of the tool. Um, and hopefully that gets you, you know, it, that helps your your end result. And if it doesn't, like, then it's, yeah, maybe it's not the best tool for you, maybe. Um, but yeah, so here, it, it, you know, I'm very curious as to how you how you went about you know, you had um, some some issues with this jump and then how you went about correcting them and whether or not this a- ended up adding to your workflow or not, you know. Um, and yeah. it, I, it uh, sounds like it did, but also, it, yeah, there are, these, there are these problems that you had to go in and fix, which I think a lot of people struggle yeah, with, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, when I when I started reviewing the recording, uh, I didn't I didn't consider this an issue mm. uh, because the one leg going crazy stuff like that was expected. Right. I was expe- expecting that. Uh, so th- this wasn't an issue for me. Uh, I knew that I a- anything that comes from the the raw data, I have to um, right. to edit and to refine later. Uh, but I, I think that the major point here is um, before recording, I was trying to figure out the poses mm. because it was a comp- it was a complex moving because uh, a complex movement because well, I, I will jump to Unreal here. Um, oh, and here it is. Here's the the here's the oh, yeah. it's so beautiful. Here it is right here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so gorgeous. Uh, it was a very I, 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 I'm. Yeah, I have to turn. I have to hide these guys here because the geometry cache, like I, I said before, totally kills out. the real time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it kills the real time. If I, if I play now, it is so choppy, and if I just hide the geometry cache, it plays in real time. <laughs> That's so nice. It is it is night and day. Yeah. So it is a, a very complex situation that that the character is on because you have to jump. Had to throw the spear, right? And this is one of the things that I, uh, the uh, uh, idea that was developed later because the, the first idea I have was just she was just jumping for her life to save her life, not mm. countering attack. Mm. Uh, this came later, thinking, oh, well, how how can I add to the story and things like that? And uh, yeah, so I thought it in the, the... And, did you go back and re did you do a, a version of this without that and then go back and re-record with the spear jump later? No, no. Okay. Uh, I started blocking the I, okay. I started blocking in Unreal. Yeah. Uh in sorry in Blender. Let me see if I can find the first block out. So it was um, just a dive block out, and then you were like, what if I add it? Yeah. 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 Uh I think yeah, this was the first Actually, this already have the spear, but uh, the first one I uh, didn't have the spear; wasn't throwing it. Mm. Uh, the pose of this character was different. I this also are uh, a previous previous geometry that I work mm. with years ago. Uh, I just made a, but uh, just have the torso, so I have to block this. I took a random arm just to to block the pose. And th- this idea came from Blender. So w- when I moved to Unreal, I-, I already have a clear idea of the how the animation should look like. Mm-hmm. And that- that's why, guys, it's so important to block it out and to a- any anything that is so rough, but it gives you a head start of the, and it helps you to develop and to add yeah. on top of, of the original idea that you have. That was going to be my question. Um, is, is that how you also work in your professional um, like projects? Is, is Does it always start with a block out for you? I mean, I think it does for most people, but a very rough yeah, it, 3D block out? It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, de- definitely. It will have to, you always have to start the, the most simple possible mm-hmm. because it is so manageable to, to fix it, to test a different proportion right. to to change it right if you have a very complex geometry with hundreds of uh separated pieces is so so way harder to manipulate yeah 
So and I think that's very tempting for starting people, simple, like for myself too. Yeah. It's like I, you know, because you, you want to be fancy and you want to have it look amazing right from the jump, and so you start getting way ahead of yourself. And yeah, it's a really good piece of advice to always start with that simplified yeah, version. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, and this works for everything. When when you start animating, you have to start with a storyboard. If mm -hmm. you start modeling, you have to start with a blockout. Uh, every, every, I think almost. Every art piece starts mm. with a sketch, right? Right. In, in the way possible. Like uh, the, the digital sculptors always say, well, we have to start with, uh, there is a primary, secondary, and tertiary forms. That's why you have to start simple and moving up uh, as soon as you start tackle the, the main thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the, the, uh, I think that's the, the way to go for almost everything related to, to art. Um, so for, for, for this animation, uh, she was doing a very complex movement here. Right. I didn't, uh, I, I, I knew that she should do this action. I didn't know what, how right. should, should do this. Uh, I, when I rigged the character, I started doing different poses in Blender. Mm -hmm. Uh, I didn't went to Rokoko yet, Rokoko Studio, it wasn't recording anything. It was just blocking out poses. And was a nightmare because in anything that I did worked. And wow, uh, the, this the well, that's the first problem. How I I should manage? How should I tackle this issue? How 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 do I make this work? How and, does the um, weight transfer? How I, do the hips turn? How do the shoulders react? How does yes, the, definitely the forearm go? Where does the head? Yeah, right. I mean, that is, I think. Yeah, right. definitely. Yeah. So uh, I I I took a, a huge mattress. And put on, on my living on my living room, and started jumping on the mattress, <laughs> trying to understand the, the mechanics and the movements. But uh, it wasn't very nice. And then um, I asked help for my wife. My wife is the the talent that yep. suit up the Rococo suit and, and make the recording. And I, I tried to direct her. Well, if you jump this way and move your arms that way. And she said, nobody jumps this way. But this is mm. fantasy. This is, uh, yeah, no, doesn't matter. And by the end of the day, well, do a few jumps. Uh, I, I gave, he, gave her the minimal direction possible. Hmm. Uh, do some jumps. Um, aim, uh, aim that way. Uh, we'll, we'll have a, a small, small cone, with, uh, maybe with, uh, paper. She, she was throwing it throw that way and let's see what happens yeah and she did a few jumps and when i start i started evaluating each one and i can reduce the playback time here and uh i started seeing the silhouette i started seeing the the, yeah. the movement the oh, direction that, that well this looks so cool i know the, the like the leg gets screwed up but it just looks so good. I, I you know, it, there's something about yes. It's so dynamic, and the legs crossing even, and uh, it it just looks so. Yeah. Yeah. The, of of course, uh, this wasn't the actual. Uh, right. This was the the actual the, the leg that was screwed up, but anyway, the the curve of the torso, mm. the position of the arms, the arc of the her movements was here and was essential so i can have the the animation that really should looks the way i was imagining it mm. and so uh i i think uh i i'm not sure how should how uh, how i would approach this project without this uh this resource here so uh, i'm really not sure but i'm glad that i have rokoko suit here for this project and was a, a huge help especially for this yeah because even yeah, because I, I changed a lot, a, a lot. Uh, I changed a lot of this animation, but anyway, it gives me the the the, the foundation yeah. of the the action, because you can see here, the pose is more extreme, right. the arms are more stretched. Because th there is no way I can make this. Uh, even close to the final piece, because I don't have the camera angle here i there's no way i can direct her well you, you should move your arms in three deg degrees to the right. right there's no way i can do this she's not i mean so, it's, it's a cartoony more you know it's an exaggerated <laughs> vibe so yeah there's a limit 
yes. to to that. But at the same time, it's also as you were saying, like you actually gave her a spear prop to hold and throw, and yeah, that helps. Like the it's so essential to have a prop to actually, you know. It, yeah, because you end up with these more natural movements, like you were saying. Yeah. yeah anyway. Um, yeah, I, I find yeah. that it's really important to actually like try to try to get into that space uh, and actually hold okay. the object and do the thing as opposed to try and do like a caricature of it. And she's even saying like that's not how people move because you have this idea in your head yeah. of how a character moves, but then it, it like runs up against the reality and it's like a mix of those two. Right. It's, it's the, yeah. Anyway, um, I don't know where I'm going yeah. with that, but yeah. And, uh, it, 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 and, and it is so funny to see here uh, because I, I can see the exact height of the mattress. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I think I have a, I have a record section here. Uh, somewhere. Oh, yeah, I saw it in the, um, in the breakdown, there's like you shot behind the scenes. Yeah. For actually jumping. Yeah, I yeah, I, I don't have it here to show you. Well it's in yeah, the, it's it in the breakdown, like... everyone. Oh, no. If you go to the description, you can, yeah. you can find it on Fabrizio's channel. Oh yeah, here. Yeah. Oh, exactly. it is here. Yes. Yeah. And she's holding uh, the pro yeah. dog. It was so funny. Cute yeah. He he was the the, the director. <laughs> yeah. Holding the prop yeah, so, it's so important. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I also made some tests uh, for the boss animation. Yeah, as well. I was wondering uh, about that. Did it, yeah, yeah. I, I I recorded, but uh, since it is so huge, right, on, on in, in the screen, uh, there was no way I could be precise on the position. So uh, by the end, by the end, uh, for at least for the boss, I hand animated. Yeah. Which I, yeah, I, I had, like I had much sense. control. Yeah, right. That, that, that. Yeah, I had much. I I had way more control because uh, he's so big and yeah. it is so. Uh, man, if, if I move an inch to right. the right, right, this spear totally goes goes off. Totally. So yeah. it, it have to be so precise that was it was getting a lot of difficult to to get the, 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 the movement the right. Worst... But it gave me some reference of the of the action. Totally, yeah. The worst thing, though, I, I, I it, and this is like where that calculation of the limitations versus the benefits or or whatever comes into play. It's it's so much like this is also why I, I mean, Rococo mocap to me is accurate enough so that I often get to that 80 percent. But if you are using a mocap system that is getting you to like 60% of the way there and then you're you're starting to fight the mocap it's like worse than hand animating and that's terrible because now you're trying to like with the the big giant i imagine you're trying to you're you're trying to fight the movement that's already there yeah. when you're editing and that is so much more of a nightmare than just keyframing it you know so it's like it's very conditional i think um depending on what you're doing and you don't want to be fighting mocap to the degree that it's more of a headache than if you did hand keying, right? That's defeating the entire purpose of it, which totally happens. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, but uh, but for with the raw data, uh, I could study the movements. I can right. see uh, the arc. Mm -hmm. I can see my my shoulder uh, moving forward before mm -hmm. the head. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there is a lot of things going on here that Rococo actually captured mm. that was very helpful for reference, yeah. for movement reference. That's interesting. So, yeah, and, and, and even if I didn't use... Actually, I use this uh, raw data, but for the other animation, not for the submission. I, I will show this later. Mm. But uh, this was this was actually used, and uh, oh, it, was, it wasn't video. edited at all. Yeah, which is so yes, awesome. Yes, yes, the extended video, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The extended video. There are some animations over there that uh, that was uh, there. Uh, what, what was recorded was a hundred percent there without even refining it. Yeah, because it's that a is, fun there was a few that. Yeah. 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 Th this one here. This one is is one of them. Maybe a, a little uh, twisting the right. the wrist a little bit, just posing the hand a little bit. But overall, uh, it is the the same movement. Yeah. Uh, for this guy here, for example. But for the submission, this was uh, my reference, animation reference. 
Yeah. And um, well, so I have the raw data, I have the rig, and then I jump jump to Unreal. Yeah. Because you're going to do your retargeting in Unreal. So, so yeah, this, yes. I think, is very... This is... And again, we were talking earlier about how... I mean, to do something at this level, with this level of quality, almost every time, mocap editing is a part of the... Like, it is a, it will be necessarily a part of the process. And so... Which is very intimidating to people because it's very niche still. And so I'm super curious about how you went about trying to yeah how you how you edited it to get to this result um yeah uh uh with the knowledge i got from from shakan i knew that the best option for me here was to retarget and edit the animation inside the real because if i do this in, I, I could do this in blender but uh so i have to export fbx with animation or maybe a lambic with mm. geometric cache that is heavy like i did for the simulation of the destruction of the wall mm. uh the destruction of the wall is something that i i know that i could could be done in unreal but i i didn't know how to make simulate uh, destruction simulation in unreal right. i didn't have the time to study it right so for this uh, for 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 some things i have to just work with i have <laughs> Uh, but uh, the, this, the retargeting system, the animation system in, in Unreal was very helpful helpful for this project. Uh, to tackle this, uh, I I chose Mixamo because uh, it is a ready-made, uh, a ready uh, rig, mm -hmm. and I've, it is very simplified. Uh, it is, there's not too much bones to, to work with. It is easy to edit, easy to add new new uh, new bones to it. Um, right. Because Shakan, I use MetaHuman base, so it is a whole other beast. A lot of yeah. bones, secondary bones for mm. twist bones twist and bones. Uh, bones to bones to hold the forms. And a lot of stuff going there, and uh, it's way more complicated. But Mixamo is, yeah, is, it is awesome. Yeah. And I I was lucky to find uh, a, a ready-made control rig for Mixamo to Unreal. And uh, again, I forgot the name of the artist. I will put it in the. I will put it the, down in the description yeah. below. Um, but yeah, it's Gabriel yeah, Pava, they, they, right? I think. Yeah. yeah, they they very good. So that made it available for free in ArtStation was crucial for me because I didn't have much understanding on Control Rig. I didn't know how to to start working right. uh, from scratch. So uh, this. I'm, I'm opening the control rig. I hope it doesn't crash. Usually, when I when I mess with control rigs in Unreal, is where it crashes. Hmm. So no, we already got rid of the it, karma, man. What? I already did it. I already. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, at we're at your side. You can... <laughs> at your side, it, it still can happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, it, 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 this is the the, the simple. Uh, as soon as you import to Unreal, it comes this way. It also has these controls already here. Uh, with I. Uh, I case set up and uh, this is a good thing because uh, it, this is why it's so important not messing with the, the name convention in any software that you're using when you're using a mix of rig with this tool because this is already named for the bones so yeah. uh, I, I will make I will make a copy and somebody uh, in the chat one. actually works with Gabriel Pava they're saying in oh, story man. which is incredible please Please give gives him my regards. Please tell him how much we all appreciate him and anyone who makes things for free. It's such an incredible uh, community that we have here that people do this for free. And uh, that's nuts. Yes. That's crazy. Yes. That's amazing. Well, thank you, Peva. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> uh, and, uh, well, here uh, you, you just need to open the control rig. You go to preview and you okay. find your... Skeletal mesh here, hero mesh. Okay. And you are basically done. And it just that's, auto. That's all. It just auto adjusts to like if you have a. I assume. Yeah. So it just auto sets them at the right bones because it knows what the mix yes. of the bones are called. And it yeah, just, they're, yeah, they're the same. The same names. So. Uh, that's why it's so important. Okay, so you uh, so have it is to, already set up. So you so you you open up the control rig in Unreal, the, this asset which you drag into your your 
Unreal project folder, right? Is that's how you get the asset in, right? You open up your Unreal project, yes, yes. Drag in the asset you download from ArtStation. Thank you, Gabriel. Yeah, Deva. Is, Incredible. Yeah. You open that up, and then you you have to add the preview mesh of your Mixamo character in the control rig asset. Yes. And then compile it, and then it will work in sequencer as a control rig. Yes. Okay. The, yes, it, it is all set up already because it, it has this setup here. Mm. That it uh, feeds the the animation sequencer, mm. uh, so everything is already set up here, uh, and also it, it is awesome because it adjusts. To, even if you don't have uh, a character that matches the proportion of the original, because there is an original mesh here for reference. Mm. Even if your character doesn't match this proportion, it adjusts to to your character. The skeletal mesh that you send here, it is auto adjust. And it is amazing, but uh, I I don't have the controls for the separated pieces of the armor. Right. So that's why I have to create extra bones. Right. And uh, if you, for example, put here elbow, no, sorry, I have to refresh first. So oh, uh, right click, refresh. 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 Yes. Uh, let me see hero. And uh, yeah, hero mesh. So you point to your original skeletal mesh and you click here. It will oh, refresh. Oh, fascinating. It will, yeah, it will, the, the new bones that you are importing here, uh, because originally it just, in, uh, it just the mix some right. the full setup. The standard mix so since I, bone list, yeah. Yes, yes. So since I created new bones, it doesn't uh, it, it doesn't update it automatically. The, the list is not updated automatically. So I have to refresh it. And now if I type elbow, for example, mm. you have it here. So this is the bone. And you just need to uh, create oh, a control. Wow, OK. New control. This is, it is here. so useful. Oh my God. Okay, so you. Yay, I, I told you. I told you. Yeah. It crashed. Oh, yeah. oh, it did crash. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how, yeah. That's how Unreal I goes. You. Yeah, you're right. No, you're no right. more karma. Yeah. Now you're yeah, good to go. No. Now we're good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but that yeah. is, but still, that is, I, we saw the important part, which is that I was assuming that you would, you would go into Sequencer. And then you were doing FK edits on the bones in sequencer, but you actually go in okay. to the control rig asset and you add <clears throat> a new controller that easily. That was so simple that you just right click on yeah. the extra bone and it adds that yes. control. And then do you have to do anything at that point? Is that control ready to be edited like do you have to reposition it to the pivot point or anything like that or is it is it kind of ready to yeah, go so, yeah yeah you, you have to make some editing uh this is the the character i uh this is the the edited uh mix okay. Control yeah, yeah, yeah. Rig. okay this is yeah so, so we don't i did jump uh, to the fate again yeah okay yeah i did elbow control uh the, the shoulder um actually i i didn't do the elbow uh Oh, it was like I the pauldron think that you did, yeah. Actually, uh, yeah, for the elbow, elbow, uh, I have the bone here, but what I think I, I'm sorry, guys, because I I messed this uh, in months ago, so some things are totally. not very, I don't. Know. But uh, uh, yeah, the the bone is here. Uh, but uh, what what I did was, when I moved this guy here, mm. uh, it kind of. Or is oriented half by half. Uh, it, it takes half of the rotation of the arm and half the, the rotation of the forearm. So it, it has, uh, has a middle. That kind so of it don't have a. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, I, 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 I did some automated stuff here. Mm. But uh, for, for the big pieces, like the, the shoulder blade, uh, shoulder pad, and uh, 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 these big parts here, also this one here. The cloth. Okay. I did these controls. And so let me make sure. Let me. Oh, you added. Okay, so you added controls. So let me let me make sure. I like. I want to go back to the timeline. So you, you have a simplified version of this character without the armor that gets uploaded to Mixamo. That gets auto rigged. Yeah. Then you bring that yes. it back into Blender. You add the armor and you add new bones at that point to the Mixamo rig. 
um, then and then at that point it's ready to go out to Unreal, and it has the bone, yeah. the new bones and the armor, armor. But that was again af- added after the Mixamo auto rigging because you wanted to auto rig it uh, a clean mesh that doesn't have extra all the extra stuff on the silhouette. And it's still when you bring it into Unreal, this control rig still is able to recognize the Mixamo skeleton, yeah. even though you've added the bones. And then to add the yeah. new control points, all you have to do is refresh the skeleton in the rig hierarchy and add those yeah, new so control it, points. It that is, is un- incredible. Yeah. That is so – it's like these – how is someone supposed to know that? It's like this is going to make someone's life so much easier. You reveal – like yeah. this is so wonderful. I can't believe it's that easy. Like you would think that it would be, I don't know, more difficult. Yeah, yeah. Uh- I, I I got really surprised because uh, the first time I, I opened a uh, control rig was a meta meta human oh, control yeah, rig. Yeah, it's a man, nightmare. There's, yeah, th- this is this has a lot of nodes already because you have controls for each finger, right? Uh, each each finger joint. It, right. it have a lot of controls here, but uh, it, it, this is not complicated. It looks like a little bit, but uh, it might be a little overwhelming the first time you you see it. But it is not because you have. Uh, the, the, basically, what we have to do is to point. Uh, I, 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 let's see if it doesn't crash. Yeah. Uh, but for example, I have the shoulder. Yeah, the shoulder pad here. This is the bone. Right. So uh, I just do the same thing I did here. I just click and drag here. Okay. And make set bone. Okay. So now, th- this node is looking to this bone here, and then you click and drag here get control oh. and this is looking to this control and uh yeah actually this is the same control but uh this uh, the, the control already created you can edit here you can uh change oh, colors yep yep change the size yeah and the shape because all that. yeah because some yeah, because sometimes uh the, the first time i use it it i just move it and when you move it you are not actually positioning the the rest position of this control mm. yeah for rest position you you are changing the location here so let me uh reset this uh oh, oh, so for the rest right. position the, the shape uh tr- position. Tra- yeah right yeah, yeah, the, yeah yeah this is the shape visual and this is the shape position rotation and scale you can also change the scale if you want huh uh so this this is the rest position when you compile it when it will go to the sequencer it will look exactly the same right, way right 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 uh, yeah this is the way to do it and then but right now it is doing nothing we have to link it right so since i'm a little far away let me move closer to the yep to and the then beginning. okay so do you have to add a new pin? Uh, and, and so you add a new pin actually uh palva was uh so thoughtful that already gave a empty pin here so okay. you can add new stuff so you just need to pin this one and the transform go to the value and you are all set that's all okay and then and what what happens if you follow this like what is what does that get connected to the um down um like even at the one you already had set up with that new chain like is that going into the output pose at the end of this chain or like where does this go to yeah because uh you can't you can't split here you have to go to the it will make a hierarchy so right. right here going back here for example i lost the link here right, right, but right. uh this is the yeah this is the original control for the elbow and then moves to here and moves to a leg guard, leg guard and and the hierarchy uh, there doesn't th- this matter. Way this is all the new doesn't stuff. Doesn't matter. Yeah, yes. right. Okay. Yeah, ju- it just needs to be linked to something. Right. So it can continue uh, being recognized by uh, by the end of the process. But it uh, doesn't matter the hierarchy. You can. Uh, it, it doesn't need to keep the order. This first, the second. It doesn't need to be this order. Right, right. It just need to be here, linked to one another, because you can't split. You, you have to continue it right that's why for example if you go to the this are for the fingers you are keeping moving forward and by then by the end you move to the second line here yeah and so and you kind of re- reverse engineered what he already had which is very yeah. nice yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah, so yeah. and so where does oh so then it 
it just terminates at the end of the chain. You don't have to you don't have to wire it into no. like an event start. No. Or, oh, okay. Huh. No, because uh, th this is what this is for. Okay. Uh, this is already linking to the sequencer. The sequence oh, here, the right. sequence node is li is feeding the sequencer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everything that you link in inside here, you can add another pin if you want. You can add another chain. Right. You don't need to. Oh, but right, uh, if you want to make make things more organized, but the order doesn't matter. You so can. you can put all of your new things in the single extra pin that Pav Pava uh, yeah. provided, right? Oh, yes, uh, I I could make the extra armor pieces continuing from the finger controls. Oh right, but it's uh, just... but just to keep things organized, yeah. I move to another pin. Yeah. Also, your organization is beautiful um, with the. <laughs> You, oh, you added you. like I would I would be so messy I wouldn't have added the note behind it or whatever but yeah it looks so looks so good and you maintained the uh, correct yeah. uh, like even with the the um, the shape note underneath and it just like looks yeah it looks very good it's important yeah well it's important yeah very important yeah. Uh, I'm usually I'm not a very organized person I mm. I, I have to admit. But uh, working on Unreal, since you have so many systems, so right. so many names, if, uh, for example, here in this hierarchy of bones, if I don't name it correctly, mm. it, it's way f harder to find. Right. So just putting the name shoulder on it j just gives me a, a head start to find the, the, the right bone and gives the control, etc. Uh, so yeah, that's the way to go. Uh, I, so it wasn't very complicated to edit the control rig for this character. Uh, for the boss, I used the same process. Okay. Uh, did you, 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 did I, you send I, him up sure. to Mixamo too? Yeah, okay. yeah. The boss is uh, from Mixamo as well. Yep. Um, and then added the, the will... pauldrons and all the extra armor pieces. Yes. Uh, for the boss, uh, there is a little different process mm. because for him, I use nanite meshes. Mm. So because they're he's super all... high poly ZBrush sculpts. Yeah, yeah. 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 I didn't yeah. want to go to the process of mating, making low poly meshes, baking it. I didn't think it is necessary with this technology and I always, always wanted to make a high poly character mm. working in Unreal. I saw that uh, ancient robot stuff. I don't remember the name. The attack demo that Epic la uh, launched in the early days of Unreal 5, and they show this nanite huge robot working. Yeah. And th this was uh, th actually this animation, this tech demo was the main inspiration for this character here, uh, for animation wise, because mm. that's what that that's where I realized that. Wow, uh, you you can animate by hand inside Unreal a high poly character. So that's right. why well, I have to make this work for, with this one. This exactly what I need. Uh, that's why I dig in and also uh, made reverse engineering of this that project to, to see how it how it does. Is uh, is, so, your, uh, is your wife's name Juliana? Yeah, my my wife. <laughs> What's up, Juliana? In the chat, good to see hey. you. Thanks for <laughs> joining. Hi, Juliana. In. <laughs> Your acting is superb for the, uh, you have been immortalized. It is very good spear throwing. Uh, <laughs> well done on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry Amazing. to interrupt. Yeah. Um, but no, no problem. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so did you add these static meshes in unreal then? So you didn't do that in blender. You did it here. Uh, Actually, uh, I did a little of both because okay. in Blender, I I made uh, base meshes right. because I did base meshes and these base meshes went to ZBrush so I could detail it. I, I sculpted most of these ornaments and details are hand sculpted. Right. Hand sculpted. Uh, then I, optim uh, the, I optimized it and then I sent to Unreal. But uh, in Unreal, I can't use nanite with skeletal meshes with deformable meshes i have to use only with static meshes that's why it differs the process with the boss mm. from the hero the hero is whole st uh, skeletal meshes it's all deformable this guy can't be right so, so he has to be attached or whatever in yeah yeah after the fact. definitely yeah, yeah. so that's why when i open the control rig 
you won't, uh, this is the wow. only deformable meshes that huh. has in this guy. There's this weird face, but it is deformable. Uh, and the arm, the, the visible parts of the arm. Uh, actually, I did something messy here. Oh yeah, here's the control. Huh. And uh, and these small pieces here are the armor pieces, control uh, to control the armor pieces. Yeah. But uh, uh, to make this work, I have to make it a, a little different process. Um, first of all, I imported this character, and I have to hide the because I actually I imported, uh, I separated this by material. Mm -hmm. So I have the head, the arms, and the proxy of the armor. If I go to... Let try to remember it. Just um, like broad shapes or something. Um. Yeah, th these are the geometries uh, in inside these st static meshes. So yeah, here, mm -hmm. uh, giant proxy. Uh, it is disabled. Right. If I enable it, hope it doesn't crash. Of course, yep. It might crash. Yeah, oh, it didn't crash. Oh wow! So these are the yeah. yeah. So, uh, but less uh, lower poly versions of the. Of the yeah, assets, way yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah. way lower poly, way mm. lower poly. Th these are the base meshes that I sent to the brush to the table. Mm. Uh, but I also imported to Unreal, so it gives me the a template right. of the position you can re where I should position. To, right, replay. You're gonna have to manually position all of these static meshes yeah. to where they should be, and then yeah. And okay. yeah. this is amazing in Unreal. When you update something, everything is updated on the fly. Yeah. So I, I just show the ge geometry mesh and now you have here. And this is the Mixamo rig. I just, uh, for obvious reasons, I deleted the legs. I, I didn't have to keep all the rig here. Right. But I have, I have many rig here. I add extra, bo extra bones to control each piece here. The same thing I did for the hero. Okay, right. So I have this one here. Everything to make the secondary movement yeah. of the strike. And again, this so is like every... such a, um, you know, I think a lot of people when they're starting out, like I know I did this, I would take a character like this and I would just upload it to Mixamo. And of course, what you end up with then is a bunch of deforming metal plates that look terrible, yeah. right? And so... Yeah. I, it like again the if you can have the importance of having a properly rigged character to making like you can have mocap that looks good and if it's on a character that has been rigged poorly it just looks terrible right and so like setting yourself yes. up for success in advance is so important and that's why i feel like this character just looks incredible yeah and um Having the proxy meshes it was so help, helpful mm. in a lot of process uh, because it helps me to understand the, 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 the mesh of the character. And also, uh, when I sent to Mixamo uh, this weird arm mm. here and the weird head is where I sent, of course, was a more complete geometry, right. was a full body a character that I just removed everything that wasn't visible. Yeah. Uh, but I, I rigged that geometry only. The rest of the armor pieces was just, uh, not, not linked, but uh, the, the influence, the deformation is 100% for each bone. Doesn't have, you don't have uh, more than one bone influencing each geometry. It is important, so you can mm -hmm. doesn't bend anything. Right. Uh, all, all the all these pieces are rigid, so you have to be a hundred percent influenced by one bone. Right. Yeah. Because uh, but, otherwise, but, you, yeah, it just looks terrible, and the metal doesn't bend yeah, like uh, that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, actually, uh, what I said is just for reference, because by the end, I imported static meshes that I linked. Mm. on top of these pieces here. So it doesn't matter if this deforms a little bit or not, but for posing things and testing stuff was helpful having this influencing 100% in each bond. But uh, since it was just linked inside Unreal that I will show you this, how it is now, uh, doesn't make it doesn't make difference. Uh, to link, uh, actually I created a blueprint for this character. Okay. Oh, and, and, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and then added all the the meshes in into the um, the hierarchy. And, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we have here this the skeletal mesh 
you can see with the skeleton, right. little skeleton icon, there is skeleton mesh. And also these bricks here are the static mesh that I import uh, for each separated piece, for each finger. Wow, oh my gosh. For wow. each piece here. Oh. So it uh, was important having the proxy shown here because right. uh, I just... Uh, I have the list of the high poly geometries here. It's just click and drag. That's wow. all. Click and drag. It is here. It just need to be. Yeah, it is here. And uh, I moved. So it, it is. Yeah, it is placed here already. And oh, where uh, is the original one? Yeah. So, uh, but when uh, when I have to do is here in parent socket. Ah. You just have to to tell which bone this will follow. But when I do it by default, I, I, didn't, I didn't know how to solve this. I definitely has a better solution for this because when I started studying the ancient huge robots from Epic, right. uh, they, they, they uh, solved this way better than me because they didn't use paired sockets. I really wish to know how they did it, how they parented the static mesh to the bones, but I didn't found out, found out why. But this is the way I could do it. Uh, the problem is uh, if I reset the scale, right. the orientation, the orientation is, is all completely. Yeah, yeah it right. goes totally off. Yeah. So I have to guess mm -hmm. by hand for each one mm -hmm. to match the closest possible for each part. Mm. So if I undo it, you you see that it is not fit, fitting perfectly, mm -hmm. but it is well positioned enough to make it work yeah but i really i was really curious how they did it because it was perfect the proxy and the high poly was matching a hundred percent yeah there's and a, i didn't know how to solve this i'm sure there's some <laughs> very clever way that they have it set up that just made, definitely you know, yes right. but yeah who knows yeah, I mean, again but, again it's like so hard to find information about these things sometimes and uh, yeah that's why i'm so excited about just I think that yeah, but, what you've just shown is so uh, um, illuminating for yeah. people, uh, is you know, because it's um, and and, and a, a good thing. Uh, one thing that is it is good for you have some some planning. Uh, mm. For example, uh, this piece here is the same. Mm. There are instances. I just need to import one. And I just duplicated it right. and linked to the other bone. The same thing goes to this phalange, and also this one as well. Uh, I didn't make the same thing for the other hand because it takes a lot of time, and the, the other hand doesn't is not showing any yeah. any part of the animation, so doesn't matter. And I just mirrored the the other the other parts because if you see in the original one, I didn't place the proxy for the other arm. Right. That's why. Uh, Again, I just like need to work smarter, not uh, harder. Right? Yeah, yeah, I, I just yeah. need to invert. I just need to invert the values and then jump mm -hmm. to the other side. And after having all the pieces placed, all the, all the high poly pieces placed, I just need to go right click here and disable. And that's why it's so important to set up the material, even if it is not uh, naming correctly stuff like that. You have to be separ separated so it can be listed here. Right, in the so LOD I have this control. sections. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, after LOD, it is in section, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, actually, sorry. It is in LOD. So, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah, that took me forever um, to find that uh, section and learn how yeah. to disable things on their own. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the good thing is what is disabled is not rendered. So uh, this... Mm. Proxy mesh doesn't take any hit to the performance. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't influence at all. When you disable, it, it is gone. It won't be processed at, processed at all. Oh, that's nice. And yeah, it, it is hidden here. And when you go back to the blueprint, it is hidden as well. And now he, he is ready to be animated. And uh, oh, yeah, I won't save anything here so I won't mess it up. Right. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, uh, for for the preparation was mailing it a uh, control rig, uh, hiding the geometry in the uh, static meshes setting after having everything set up, and then in fitting the the blueprint with the static meshes and the uh, positioning it correctly and parenting to the bones. 
Yeah. Um, and I think and... it's so important that, like, as you were saying before, you went through uh, hell figuring out everything for <laughs> Chacon, which prepped you yeah. to be able to, like, you knew you weren't going to have to learn entirely new systems for this submission. And you'd already, yeah, y- yeah you were work. you'd already set up yourself for success a little bit, I, I feel like, because you'd, you'd, you'd gone through such a difficult thing with the metahuman control rig, which, yeah, so many more bows, yeah. so many, so much worse in terms of a nightmare of, of the blueprint and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have, I, I, I have this, um, I, I keep sp- punishing myself mm. starting things with hard stuff right uh when i when i do when i start studying a new software i always try to make a complex scene it is a no-go for anyone mm-hmm. i don't recommend that uh, it is uh man i, I really need to rethink this but no, it is but in my did. nature right you kind of <laughs> You, you, you by yeah, I guess yeah, yeah. For Shakan, you you, you yeah. screwed yourself, but that enabled uh, you to be uh, ready for this. I I might maybe some somewhere in my mind, I think if I punish myself enough now, mm. it will it, it will be easier later. But at the same way, in this process of learning, being harder. It is so much easier to give up. Mm-hmm. So that's why uh, everyone that is learning new things they have to be careful and have to set the spe- expectations yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and also, don't try make so complex stuff that you don't uh, have too much understanding on it in uh, things that has has deadlines. Totally. Uh, I think it is my main recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. If you start learning new things in that uh, in in a deadline, uh, you you have a big chance to be screwed and you're stressed so, yeah, and uh, that that strangles your yes. creative process and and all that okay yeah. so, and this is oh no and please. this is not the goal you, you are uh, the, the goal is to make nice thing that you like and to be proud of yeah uh you don't you won't do this uh, by too much stress right uh, if, if you stress too much it will damage your process and your creativity like you yeah, mentioned yeah yeah and it's so easy to spiral uh, yeah. you know just into a negative yeah. space where you're like i'm dumb and i i don't know what i'm doing and yeah it's it's so easy once you are overly ambitious to just get into that messy yes i don't know mindset too yeah. okay yes yeah, sequencer this is what i was curious and about it, next and i'm sorry are you okay on time yeah. i know we're a little over are you are you okay still no, I'm okay. totally good. Okay, cool. Because I am curious about this part, and then and then we'll let you go. And there's also some questions about in the chat about um, for us the your Ember Gen. This is Ember Gen, right? That that you used for the VDB. So, yeah. Yep. Yes, yes. The VDBs are Ember Gen. Uh, the Pricos are uh, an Niagara system, uh, yep. native from Rio. There's no plugin involved in here. Um, I you I'm using the the four VDB support that mm-hmm. comes with Unreal uh, 5.3, and yeah, I think that's not too much, too well, much to add. Well, uh, I'm curious about. Okay, so the last piece of this is for me that I want to know about. <laughs> Again, this is about me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is you have this unbelievable slow motion effect that you were telling me a little bit about yesterday before we hopped on. And I'm curious, you had a very, you had an opinion about how to do that, which I think is very interesting. And, um, and also, I guess, I mean, this is, we should, I want to cover the, the mocap part of it first, but also how, yeah, slow-mo for all of it in sequencer. I mean, even with the Embergen export, I assume that you export out a set number of frames that, and I can tell, yeah. I feel like it's looping, but how do you get that all to play nice? So it starts at the right point in sequencer. You no. Know, so your render like doesn't have a weird cut in one of the smoke things. And is that, how did you, yeah, yeah, all well, of that I'm curious about. Okay. Okay. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, at first for the ambidran, yeah. uh, I, I, I didn't, I wasn't worried with looping. 
Okay. Uh, I didn't. It, it is not looping. Uh, if you can see here, you, it, it keeps jumping. Right. But by default, um, when when you start rendering the animation, it starts playing at the first frame of the VDB, no matter uh, where is playing the viewport. It, it always starts in the in the first frame. Uh, I'm I I saw a video uh, after finishing this project. Actually, th this process uh, well, uh, I learned from the Winbush. Uh, mm. tutorial. Yeah, I saw that. Board VDB support. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. And uh, yeah, it was the first. He he explained step by step how to set up the material, okay. how to import the VDB to to Unreal. Was a little different because before uh, I was using a plugin. It was a standard plugin that is free that gives uh, VDB support. Mm. Uh, I jumped to Unreal 5.3 because the original plugin doesn't support uh, secondary lights. It only supports uh, one directional light hmm. or the skylight. Uh, since for, for this scene, I use so many different small lights, mm. uh, the VDBs wasn't uh, looking correctly. So when I went to Unreal 5.3, went to all, to, to all this process using the uh, Winbush tutorials, yeah, it give, gives me the, the, the visuals I wanted to. Uh, but uh, I, I didn't, uh, I, I know after finishing this project, uh, I saw a video that you can add control uh, mm. of the frames played in the sequencer. Mm. I didn't know this by the time I was working on this project, so I just exported uh, more frames that I really need to, ah, so yeah. can, because it, it feels a, a little less, and it will make the loop and do cut, will make the cut right. as well. So I, I have right now uh, 120 frames for the entire animation, and I probably exported 200 or 300 frames. Right. And also, uh, Embergen, I made the simulation in slow motion. You have a feature, you have a, a lighter oh. over there that makes uh, everything slow motion, and naturally it will export more frames than you are play, than okay. being played. And then, did you speed it up and then slow it down in sequencer? Like, did you? Um, yeah. Uh... I guess, oh, or is it playing back at a solid? Um, at yeah, a solid it, it, I, I didn't. It, it, yeah, it, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't slow down. the The simulation doesn't slow down. Oh, interesting! Uh, wow. Yeah. Because you don't notice. Because it just it's, looks perfect. I mean, it just looks. Yeah, because uh, because uh, the, the main focus is the character. The character right. is the first thing you see in the animation, right. and uh, the the actual uh, the actual speed. Is a very is a, in a very very small time. So mm. uh, right in the beginning, it jumps to the slow motion. So it don't have enough time to notice that the simulation it is not slowing down. Oh. And also for the the particles, I didn't know how to control the slow motion in particles. So I, I I thought it would be impossible to control this. I know that Unreal has a very nice feature in the sequence that is time dilation that you control the mm -hmm. the speed of the the animations in everything that is happening in our scene. But I, I didn't uh, go to this solution because I want to have the most control possible with the character animation. Uh, I, I, so I, I hand animated the, the boss in slow motion and uh, I used the Rococo data to the character and stretched it and then bake it to keyframe. So I, I will you, show it did here. Did you export your Rococo animation in a higher frame rate then? Did you, or did you use 24? Uh, uh, let, let me remember. No, yeah, I, I exported in 24. And then stretched. Oh, interesting! In and it looked okay, huh? Yeah, yeah, it looked okay. Yeah, I, I was a little worried about this because uh, I didn't know if I had enough uh, if the interpolation would screw right, the, right. The, the the animation. But it did. It didn't. No, it looks it super, nice. super smooth. Yeah. So, so by stretched, what you mean is you load the animation in to yeah, on your uh, character, like... and then you like cut it. Um, and stretch it, or did you just stretch it? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. uh, I, I'm not sure if you can see this here, because yeah. when, when you bake keyframes, it disables the, the original animation. Right. But uh, I will disable the control rig here. And did you do the stretching uh, before you baked? Like, you you, you put the animation yeah. on, you, you, you stretch the most of the animation, which is the slow-mo part, and then you bake it to the keyframe, at which point it's baked at a solid um it's a baked like um 
in you're not duplicating frames or whatever at that point it's just baking what you've already done what you've already loaded on if that makes sense yeah yeah okay cool yeah. so yeah he, here is the original uh motion mm -hmm. came from rococo uh well well something went wrong here i'm not sure if i mess up with some data well, because the old... original yeah i mean you've touched this project so yeah. much i'm sure that but yeah. I can imagine how it, yeah, here. How it yeah, it starts a little faster, right. start faster and then goes low. And then I made a, a transition here. I just overlapped one another. Uh, and this is stretched in the properties you can right. do here. Right, right, right. Play rate is point, point zero 0.07. Wow, and it looks and... that good. I'm surprised. And the other is, I can't select it, I don't know why. Yeah, it is 1.3. Mm. Actually, I accelerated a little mm. bit yeah. for the normal speed. And then I stretched to 0 0.07, mm. the second animation. And looks like this. Yeah. Uh, and and that, goes, that goes back when I when you so, said earlier, uh, when I said that it wasn't close to what I was envisioning for this animation, but gives me a lot of reference a lot of good movements right. so i can work on the poses yeah even so in the movement you just of, like the the global movement of the hips i because i often find even that is like yeah it's hard to know how much to move a jumping character before you even get to the shoulder twists and the hip twists it's like how much does that hip root bone even move through space on yeah. a jump um that can be yeah useful. and and yeah and this the, the hip rotation is the least I added. Mm -hmm. So it was and, and it, it is so hard. The, these rotations, these curves are so hard to get it right. Right. Yeah. And the, the this was the yeah. yay! Oh, there we go. I told you that will happen again. There we go, baby. <laughs> that's right. That's that's unreal. That's doing its thing. Yeah. It happens. Yeah, yeah, it does. It happens a lot, especially when you. I mean, without having a screen on and like having a camera on and all of that. Um, but uh, f okay, but fascinating. Okay, so, so again, just to make sure I've got it right, you load you you you've after you've done all your rigging, after you've set up your control rig, then you bring in your character, you load in your Rococo animation, which you use the IK retargeter to do the retargeting, which we don't need to get into because that's all been covered, right? To get that animation yeah. on the character in the first place, um, and then you you do the time stretching on the animation track and then you bake it to yeah. the control rig yeah. at which point you start doing your additive edits yeah okay. uh for who doesn't know is you just click right click on the animation yeah. and it is let me remember i don't remember oh i think it's on the character it's like on the on the character, uh, the character. It's character. Yeah, like uh, one up in the hierarchy from animation. I, do... I think it's it baked. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Baked to contour rig. Yeah, yeah you have the, the contour rigs here. Actually, this is another uh, one for the... Because I, I did a second a second character with cloth animation. I can okay. show this later. Uh, for, for, for the other animation, for the extended version. Oh, right. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, but uh, if I select this one, it goes wrong, of course, because it's not the same skeletal mesh. Right. So you have to click this one here, uh, and you create, you just pick it, the animation, and you have an, a second, a second control rig here. And it's been pre-slowed I... down. I mean, because I was, um, yeah, that's so clever. Because yeah. that's what I was, that's what I was having a hard time wrapping my head around is how yeah. you do, like how you slow it yeah. down, and it's such a good way of doing it. it. Because it's now it's just editing and the the timing is taken care of already. Yeah, definitely. Even looking at the graphics, uh, if you can see this one here, you see that this right. is the normal speed, and then and then Ooh. goes to the slower. Right. Yes. So is, these are all the curves. Uh, I won't mess with this right now because it, it definitely will crash again. Uh, but uh, let me delete this one and go back to the original. Yeah, actually, I deleted my. I screwed the. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you deleted the actual. Uh, well, don't, yeah, don't I, I will. I will open the project again. Uh, yeah, I will just open the project again. 
Okay. I, I think it is better just close everything and don't don't save anything before screw this up. Yeah. I don't want to lose this animation. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Uh, um for it's John but this is the the main the, the the process is is this and I did it for Actually I, I the boss is a little more simple because I didn't use motion capture for this scene specifically. But um let me go back here. If I go to jump to the characters, you can see that I have the controls here. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is already keyframed. You see, there is not a, a lot of keyframes for each part. Mm -hmm. There are some parts that are only four keyframes for the whole animation. So the edit uh, was time consuming, of course, but... Uh, yeah, you you have a very good starting with starting with a very good base. Yeah, uh, you can make a huge hard shortcut in the production, so we can achieve the animation we really want with the right poses, right silhouettes, things that are hard to control in any motion capture section. It's difficult to oh this this silhouette silhouette, silhouette is looking right, but in three seconds you should be a little more turned. Mm -hmm. It is impossible to direct this. Uh, so yeah, you, you having this control on the fly in real in real time, looking at all the effects happening uh, all together, it is amazing. It's a, yeah. a workflow that I wanna use even more after yeah. this project. And so for the legs that were bad data from Rococo, did you end up deleting the keyframes and just doing them straight up hand animated, or did you? um yeah that's what well, i would I, I deleted do. yeah i would just delete that yeah i i, I de yeah, yeah i deleted because uh you it is easier to keep contact with the floor right. this way because right. here uh from here to here there is no keyframe for the for this food right and right. then you animate it because you have our you have the torso working already right. so you 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 figure out how the the legs should behave yeah. in this situation. I feel like that's an easier thing to eyeball too, right? Yeah, right. It's like, and because it's IK, you get that nice little, you know, you're changing where the ankle is and the, and the rest of the leg is following. And I, that's a, yeah. yeah, that, that, that's, I feel like that to makes total sense. Yeah. And, and also uh, gives a lot of freedom because I, I have to animate uh, the old character moving more to the right mm. because my wife couldn't jump that far right cause and also uh know. there is a mattress the the actual character right. kind of uh lands in in this height so i have to animate it so mm. it can land in the floor mm. and how did you so do... i have to make these adjustments how did you do the cloth and you you were saying that you ended up did you end up using chaos uh cloth or you, you or hand animating it i i feel like hand animating it would be so yeah. much easier yeah in this in this case yeah. because since i was using motion uh, i i was uh doing the slow motion right. uh, animating right. in slow motion right uh, the cloth anime I, I wouldn't have any control for uh for uh simulating the cloth yeah it's a mess so I, yeah so i i didn't want to go to this path and I, I knew that I would have some problems. Maybe it would work if I turn off the gravity and stuff like that, but I did I didn't even test it because I knew that uh hand animating wouldn't be so su super complicated because it is a small animation in slow motion. There's not a lot of movements happening here. Yeah. Um so it is a more uh, straight animation. And again of the cloth. I feel like just another example of working very smart in that it would be really easy to be like, I want a really complicated cloth, and yeah, you know, it just doesn't need it, to be. It just this is looks amazing, and it's like yeah, nine it, it, controls, you, you know, as opposed to like twenty four bones in there. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. If you take a close look, you, of course, the, the animation is not realistic. Uh, there's no way I can hand animate it, uh, uh, simulate in a simulation level. Uh, but it doesn't need to be, yeah. because uh, the folk, because you, you don't see too much of the character here. He, he, she's in a shade. Uh, she's dark. Uh, you don't see too much of the cloth here. Of course, if you don't have any animation happening here, it will be noticeable. Uh, but having some movement, it's kind of, kind of, uh, uh, how, how do I say this? 
your brain totally. uh, yeah, yeah, allows yeah. it. Yeah. You, you, you kind of let it go. You don't don't realize it because there's so much things happening. Uh, the main the main attention was was focusing on is, was the boss, the arc of the the spear. So the cloth, of course, yeah, the, is is not realistic, but uh, yeah, it was I, but... the least. Thing they will lose. Yeah, I feel lose. like uh, you know what my attitude for it always is is that like the my goal is always to like reality is so complicated and once you get over a th a certain threshold of complicated things happening in your in your scene, we just accept that it looks like right, right? It doesn't. So I, no. there's so much going on in here that that part is fine it looks i mean it looks perfect and because you've you've like reached a threshold that is commensurate with reality in terms of you've overloaded my brain like there's so many <laughs> the dust and the you know the the part even the you know the swirls and the smoke everything looks and then you don't even have the destruction aspect but like once you reach that threshold of complicatedness it's just your brain kind of accepts that it looks right. I don't know. Um, and you don't need to kill yourself in a yeah. tiny detail that, that nobody is going to notice. Yeah. Is it, is and, it... and uh, oh, please. I'm sorry. No, 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 please, please, please. I'm getting, I'm just getting so jacked yeah, up. Uh, well, uh, because you, you were saying about time, um, I remember about the deadline and thresholds and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, after uh, after managing the the whole animation of, of things working, the, the the movement of the hero, uh, the arc, uh, the the reaction of the boss. Uh, after that, it's just adding stuff. And uh, you see, well, mm. I, I what I what I thought was uh, in the last week of uh, before uh, the last week before the deadline, I should have this animation ready mm. and just having room to small adjustments mm. and, um, and, and, color and that's what I did and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Color grading, maybe refining a few things in animation here and there, a little of the, um, this, the direction, uh, the, the, the reaction of the armor is, is one thing that I change, keep changing mm. a lot because mm. sometimes I, I, Oh, I, I think I will move the head of the boss a little more further. So we have to adjust other things as well. Uh, but yeah, this was small adjustments, very, very fast, very easy to do some of these adjustments. And also having room to work in other things. Uh, um, the, the, the other animation I did, uh, when I finished this one, I, I was mm -hmm. a little, uh, I, I was a little let down because uh, I enjoyed so much doing this project that I, I want to do more. That's why I did the extended version the little, that I posted on YouTube. The dancing and the... Yeah. 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 Actually, the dancing was after after the announcement. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, oh, extended yeah. in, in this clip. Okay. Yeah, uh, I will open the... Why, why, did, why did I put this? Did you also... The um, are the other characters Rococo as well for the reactions? Or is that... Like a Mixamo thing, yeah, those guys. Yeah, uh, no, these are these are these are Rococo. Oh, wow. uh, uh, these yeah. are from Rococo as well. I, I oh, I, I, and they're just I stretched. These two, they're yeah. just stretched, uh, stretched out. 24. Yeah, just stretched. Yeah. It doesn't. Huh. I, I, did, I didn't great. do the same thing as putting is uh, in regular speed and then small. It is all in slow motion hmm. all the time. That there is so smart. Here. That is so. I was God. It's such a smart. Uh, way to approach it that you just exported the Embergen stuff in slow mo. Like the whole thing is in slow mo. That's so brilliant because my impulse is always to take real time things and then slow it down. But you, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's just very uh, smart. So brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, th this is one of the scenes that I actually use cloth animation for this character. Oh, okay. Yeah. And. And yeah, I used the that mm, uh, yeah the bone that came, control of the vision. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if I turn on oh, the simulation, looks so cool. Here. Wow, it nice does simulated. look fantastic. Look at that. Yeah, so that that was no way I could hand animate this but one. But that's the enemy. And, it it looks so good that that cloth animation yeah. that I my brain is like, let's just use that for everything. And no, no, no. 
you want the extra control for your hero shot. Like it's better to yeah. not use the crazy uh, chaos thing. And but man, it's like the enemy of. Um, it just looks so good. It makes me want to only use cloth simulation, and it's such a disciplined thing. I feel like for you to be like, yeah. no, like don't do fall into it, that trap, you know? Yeah, it works really well, uh, but you kind of lose control. Right. Uh, yeah, right now. It's, if it's, you have a, a red animation, it's full yeah, if, it is on the fly. It, it is real time. Yeah. So it works, uh, but if you have a more specific control, uh, there's no, no way you can, you yeah. can add it. And uh, yeah, th this is so all Rococo recorded. This animation here uh -huh. was actually me holding a, a, a prop stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got to use the prop. It's and, so uh, important. Yeah, yeah, yeah because uh, there's no way you can keep your hand totally still after right holding right something, exactly. Right? You have to yeah. you have to rest your the, the, your arm in something so yeah. you can do this. And that's what I did. And also the boss is 100% Rococo. Mm. Uh, this animation here is the one I I mentioned. There is I I, I use for reference for the submission, but this oh. one is the actual Re Rococo data. Yeah, yeah. And this one, it doesn't matter where the you, you don't see the spear. So it, like this looks incredible. Yeah, yeah. Right, because you're working yeah, within because... the sandbox of, you know, of make of of a. Yeah, you're you're framing out the the part that is problematic, which is that works, right? Uh, that's that's great. Yeah, yeah, because you'd make it so also, hard on yourself the other way. Yeah, and these uh, small oh. animations like this one uh, is one I think <sighs> Rococo shines most because it is so fast, so easy to make. And oh, this is a simple animation. I could do this by hand, but when you do this by hand, you it is so simplified. You don't have the subtleties of the movements mm -hmm. that Rukuku gets. And a simple animation like that, animating by hand, it is so time consuming. Yeah. So hard. And th this here was in one record. I didn't try different versions. I did the, the first one. Yeah, let's put this one here and works and that's fine. Uh, the whole animation for the standard sequence, I think it took... Uh, actually, I, I worked three or four weeks for the whole submission. Mm. And I took three days to make the standard animation that I think it is a 40 second animation. It is so faster when you already have the assets, already have the systems working and you don't have to hand animate anything. Rokoko already giving you this this raw data. Just sometimes you have to do small adjustments for the position, but uh, for in this, uh, this kind of thing, it is great. Uh, I have more time retargeting, cleaning the animation for the submission because it was a very specific and complex movement. Mm. That I, there, there is, I, I don't think there is anyone that could make a perfect movements that would fit for this animation. Right. So that's why, in this case, was was uh, necessary. But uh, overall, I think it is a a great way to go it's, if we have, it, if we have the, the resource. It's so great. And you were saying this yesterday on our on our call, but just, and, and I, I get the sense of even what you're talking about right <laughs> now is is like, you, you do not, you have not locked yourself into any one way of doing anything, right? It's like, it's context dependent on what you're doing. Don't get too attached to any, you know, don't get too attached to the cloth physics if it doesn't make sense for this shot. Don't get too attached to yeah. hand animating if it doesn't make sense. Like these ones, the the Rococo adds to it. If the Rococo isn't going to add to it, like don't feel like you have to use any one tool. And it's a very um, mature, it's like a mature artist's perspective in that it takes, it's a hard learned lesson. I feel like that, that, that yeah. ability to let things go and adapt which um yeah. comes through and what your 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 approach to these different these yeah, completely I, different I, shots right yeah yeah totally different and uh, this is one great thing about unreal because mm -hmm. you have this sequencer sequencer i think it is one of the best features that i know hmm. for unreal because i i don't know too much about unreal right i, I was main focusing in animation mm -hmm. and uh pre-rendering stuff so sequencer was an amazing feature and i i just can 
uh, set up the cameras and mm. put everything, start feeding uh, here uh, the timeline with assets and have uh, independent controls. Mm. It doesn't affect to anything, any, scene, any other scene. You have all this uh, freedom and yeah, it is awesome. And I have a bunch of different, uh, we have a, a sequ level sequence for each scene totally independent with different assets uh i have to reposition uh right. environment props as well for each scene so it can work mm -hmm. it is so totally doable and non-destructive it is amazing are you sold are you are you um do you think you're gonna like work more in unreal i mean this is a very you were talking also yesterday about how this was a you know this all worked because it was real time it was a video gamey look but do you find yeah. that, like you were just talking about, um, the freedom of setting it all up, and then ha like, are you sold on this? I this this workflow. Are you going to try and work more in this? Is like moving forward where it makes sense? Yeah, uh, I think if the project allows, right. definitely. Right, and because that's the there, important. There are there are yeah there are a few projects in Ginger Peak that we did in Unreal. Yeah, and was really great it works really well of course we have some step back, uh, setbacks like any process but uh overall uh some things that we did in a real i don't i don't think should would be done mm. by the time we have in other process mm. yeah so yeah it is very rewarding experience and process it is great i don't think it is uh the best choice for every type of project. Totally. But uh, but uh, it, it definitely for me is the most fun. Yeah. It is so fun to work with Unreal, and uh, every time I, I can work with Unreal, it is a, a breeze. It is awesome. Yeah. You can see even in my question, it's like I'm already falling and in, falling into this trap that we were talking about. About like, are you gonna work in Unreal more? It's it's always it should always lead with the needs of the of the project there should that you shouldn't it's like you don't work backwards it, you can't be like i'm gonna use unreal for this it's what are the needs of the project and then does it make sense and if it doesn't don't use unreal even mm -hmm. though it's super fun even though it's it's got all these yeah, good things it doesn't definitely. right yeah which is it's, it's it's so hard to not just want to do everything in unreal or or be like you were saying people obsessed with blender like why don't you do everything in blender and it's so hard to divorce yourself from that like allegiance to a workflow and really step back and say, is does this make the most sense to do it this way? And if it doesn't, don't do it that way. Um, yeah, well, I, I think it, it kind of depends uh, on the availability of some tools. Of course, Unreal is free, mm. uh, at least for now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, for example, uh, Houdini uh, isn't. Mm -hmm. uh, there is an indie version that is more accessible, but I I even though you have to uh, you have to to pay for right. it, yeah. uh, some people do, ju some people just can't, and you just need to solve other way because by the end of the day, you are, it is your work, it is your job to find solutions, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of the. Of course, there are some people that are constrained to softwares uh, due to the pipeline. Uh, but uh, freelancers or indie that are not constrained to it and can uh, have the chance to use other tools, I think the the best way to go in this case is use what works best for the task you have. Mm -hmm. I know it's so simple. It's such a simple thing to say out loud. It's like uh, <laughs> I, I was an editor for a long time, and and our go to refrain is always just cut to the best shot. Like cut to the best shot. It's it's the easiest, right? But then you you end up having so many um yeah like so many bad um impulses that that get in the way of that and it's right like use the tool that makes the most sense it's such easy advice and it's so hard to stick with yeah. sometimes you know but it's so true that just like do what makes the most sense yeah <laughs> yeah well uh, learning new tools is hard mm. it is really hard really really time consuming i totally understand the the drag Mm -hmm. that it is in the beginning when you don't know anything about the interface and don't know what 
any anything where is the the, the tools you need uh, it is uh, overwhelming at the beginning in every software i i learned mm -hmm. uh, my through the, my entire career but uh it totally worth it yeah. if you are able to know to understand and and, and study new tools i think that you you when you realize you are more versatile mm. you can tackle more problems easier yeah and, and then you have yeah it right, is very rewarding more options for solving those problems and in ways that aren't constrained by by a specific tool because you you just need yeah. to use the tool that makes the most sense in the context of what you're doing yeah I, and, yeah definitely yeah and uh shikan i feel like was such a good it, it can be such a good thing to uh have a personal project to to learn something in a way that is not deadline dependent right that is not going to be yeah. panic inducing and um yeah i don't know yeah it's, it's great man yeah. okay well, well, the, the problem of having the deadline is you have the chance of never finishing it <laughs> right yes and then you get yeah and then you get frustrated like i've definitely done that before and then i'm like okay well i'm not gonna make yeah. the deadline so i'm done and uh yeah that can be a, again a very negative kind of the space that you can kind of get into of just yeah being like i wasn't able Definitely. to do it now i don't want to do it because i wanted the result and yeah um oh you're opening up shikan yeah i'm opening it but i i never open in the so latest and so it's it is compiling it might take might take a while yeah. <laughs> so i don't i don't know if I, uh, if you will open well by the, the, I, by the I, time you need i think that we can Sorry. we can call it here man this was so okay incredible thank you so it was uh, like i am so excited to go back and rewatch this for the control rig workflow and just uh, you had such a uh, yeah it's such a good way of approaching this whole project with the slow-mo and the that you did everything in slow-mo and it's, i i love it it's such a I don't know. Again, I get all like misty eyed about our community, but it's so incredible to see how people solve these problems. And it's because it's so hard to find. It's it's such a so many of these yeah, like, 5.3 so, is, is so new. It's so, you know, it's such a new tool and it's really hard to find information oftentimes on basic. Yeah, things. sometimes it's, it is really hard. Sometimes I really I really had I really wish have uh, access to a unreal guru mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. <laughs> so it makes things so much easier but yeah oh, but, sometimes you have to just dig in and try and but you are the unreal get guru frustrated now i mean this is like oh, for somebody that, well i mean you know i, oh, I won't thank get you. to but it's it's like it's you know for almost everyone in our industry teaches themselves every almost everything and this I, I thank you. I cannot like even from a personal perspective. Thank you so much for being so willing to get into showing these small details about how you set this up is just it's I, I, I would imagine there's literally no other resource than this video for some of the things that you just told it, it, like and it's such a it's very um, it's very wonderful when people especially for people who are doing things at such a high level as this plays in the background, this gorgeous shot. It's like, that is what we all want to see is things actually being used in the real world. And so it really is just, thank you for hopping on. I'll stop saying that. It's very, um, uh, but you know, it's true. Oh, no, I, yeah. Oh, th th thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so thank you. Thankful for, uh, Rococo uh for um sponsoring these challenges and uh, giving away these amazing prizes uh, having the chance or people like me having access for this technology and and do things in a better and easier and faster way uh, it, it is amazing man uh, like, like for example for the uh, any tool for uh for the control rig as well mm -hmm. uh, and you you yeah. can imagine it is a such a I, it is not a small thing, but it is very helpful. But at the same time, it is a it is an asset, an asset that gives a huge head 
head start for me yeah. in the animation for this project. So a, a lot of stuff, and of course, Rokoko um, f uh, feel a huge gap in, in the production of this piece as well. And yeah, all of these on uh, app games, uh, making it available for free yeah. for indie people, freelancers, um, all the, the content that they are giving away as well, man, everything is moving so much faster and it is so amazing. Yeah. Uh, looking at the artists as well, having the chance of uh, showcasing their work and the, the, the chance that they're giving me as well for this is amazing. And I'm so thankful, thankful for that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so with you. And it's so also, it's like so easy in these days of AI terror and all this stuff, like to be <laughs> scared about the future, but oh my God, like what a time to be a digital artist. It's just incredible that uh, unreal like you're saying like the, the that they gave out the example demo projects of the um valley of the ancients so that you could reverse engineer yes. it and um you know yeah, yeah. yes that Val valley of the ancient thank you so much for reminding me the name of the yeah of the yeah but the scene the project it's it's it's, it's amazing um okay well i've kept That's you awesome. for uh it we did what is it? Two and a half hours, Fabrizio. Thank wow. you so much. I, I didn't even realize. I it. know. <laughs> I hope Juliana is not angry for us keeping you, but um, man, no, yeah. not at all. It's so fun. I just have a blast. It's like I, 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 it's just I just personally, it's like so wonderful to hop on and be just like in the weeds and uh, yeah. Anyway, so I think we will call it there. Oh, everyone. thank you so much. Yes. Thank you, Fabrizio. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you so in. much. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I maybe we'll do this again at some point. It would be great to... Yeah, sure. Yeah. My pleasure. I like to do... Uh, one thing we did before is, like, um, we could do a stream where, like, I make mocap live and then send it to you. And then you, like, we could, like, have a challenge where we, like, in an hour ah. try to do something fun or... I don't know. This ah. is a blast. This is a, genuinely, thank you this so much. This would be fun. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. We'll do I it. I like the idea. We'll, we'll figure out a time. I, I It's just uh, sure. it's fun, you know? And uh, things will go wrong on that one as well. <laughs> and I, But but good point. I'm taking your, your advice to... I'm going to stop putting it out there <laughs> and asking for it, I think, as much as well. Uh, that's, that's good on me, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay, everyone. We're finally awesome. we're tuning off. Thank you again, Fabrizio. We'll see you in the next next week. Thank we'll you be, so much, Seth. Yeah, man. And next week we'll be making more free mocap. So come back and um, and and yeah. Okay. That's I never know where to where to actually end it, but we're ending it. And okay. Have a good weekend, everyone. We'll see you. That's awesome. See you in the next one. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye, bye. <laughs>